nature, nature, nature. God is the only creator. This earth is a pretty place. Its beauty we want to embrace. It is a motherland. So let's think of her feelings and understand. Children, can any organism live alone? No, different organisms interact with each other and with their environment. There is a natural balance between these organisms and the environment. If we disturb this balance, it might affect the survival of organism. But firstly, I will explain you what is an environment. It is derived from a French word environer, means encircle or to surround. So, the word environment means everything that surrounds and affects living organism. As you can see, these wild animals, rhino, lion, tiger, so they are organisms and the place, the surrounding they are living in is forest which is their environment. Forest has innumerable other living things too. It also has non-living things such as air, water, soil, minerals, etc. So children, a living being exists by interacting with the non-living things like air, water, climatic factors and so on. We can also say that member of a community of living beings in a given area interact with each other and the non-living components of the area to form a self-sustaining system which is known as ecosystem. Ecosystem may be small or large and if exist in water body such as in an ocean, a lake or pond. It is an aquatic ecosystem as you can see in this picture. Those that exist on land are terrestrial like mountain, forest and desert ecosystem. Rest in detail I will explain you later. Children, do you know that the branch of biology which deals with ecosystem is known as ecology? Yes, that's very good. And the word ecology is derived from the Greek word oikos, meaning dwelling place or house or a place to live in. The term ecology was coined by the German scientist Ernest Haeckel in the year 1869. Let us study history of ecology. Herodotus in 480 BC gave the concept balance of nature. Then Ellen Swallow was the woman who founded ecology in 1892 in which she focused on industrial pollutants along with air and water quality. We will be studying about many more ecologists ahead. Look at this slide in which atom is the smallest particle which forms molecule followed by cell, then tissue which forms organ, organ forms organ system and finally living organism, whether plant or animal. Since the organisms cannot live independently, they depend on each other for living and group of organisms of same species in an area which forms population. For example, humans are seen together in groups. Same way, herd of cows, flock of birds are also seen in groups. I hope you are getting. Now, when different population live in a defined area and interact among themselves, form a community or you can say biotic community. For example, in a forest community,
there are population of plants animals insects etc right but these organisms adapt themselves to the surrounding environment which includes biotic and abiotic components and the stage when interaction between various biotic and abiotic component takes place it forms an ecosystem since several ecosystem are connected to each other whether it is terrestrial or aquatic on the surface of the earth all together it constitutes the biosphere so this was systematic arrangement of components in a system in order of hierarchy which give rise to different levels of organization from a single living thing to a biosphere now children number of times i have used these terms biotic and abiotic components what are these these are two main components of an ecosystem which is clearly explained with the help of flow chart biotic components includes all kind of organisms that is plants animals and microorganisms which i'll be explaining you first another component is a biotic component that is non living components which includes climatic factors such as light temperature wind humidity and environmental factors such as air soil and water now i don't think so that there is any sort of confusion we will see how sunlight which is an abiotic component is responsible for the energy flow in the ecosystem all energy in ecosystem comes from the sun which is the ultimate source of energy on the earth the biotic components are classified or categorized into three types based on their nutritional relationship and these are producers also known as autotrophs then consumers also known as heterotrophs and at last decomposers these are also heterotrophs but since they feed on dead and decaying matter they are known as saprotrophs clear children producers includes only green plants trees grass etc as they are base of every food and can manufacture food through photosynthesis which is a process by which green plants synthesize food that is sugar in the presence of sunlight chlorophyll and carbon dioxide and hence are known as autotrophs through this slide you can easily recall which you have studied in previous class next is consumers all animals non green plants and microorganisms that depend directly or indirectly upon the producers for food are called consumers and hence are also known as heterotrophs consumers are further divided into herbivores carnivores omnivores and scavengers on the basis of what they feed on so starting with herbivores these are animals like cow sheep goat which depend on plants directly for nutrition and are thus called primary consumer carnivores are animals like snake wolf lizard frog etc that eat other living animals and are called as secondary consumers large carnivores that feed upon small carnivores or 
Secondary consumers like peacock, eagle, tiger and lion are tertiary consumers. Another category of carnivores eat flesh of dead animals like vultures, hyenas and jackal indirectly serve a very useful purpose. They clean up the environment by eating dead organisms. They may be secondary or tertiary consumers. Some animals eat both plants and animals like crow, bear, cockroach and human beings as well. But I am herbivore. Oh, I mean to say that I am vegetarian. Okay? From this slide, you can easily understand that when a plant or animal origin, which is an organic matter, becomes lifeless, means has no life, they are break down by the microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi and protozoa to draw nutrition from it and decomposes the living organisms into the soil. So, decomposers or reducers not only keep the soil fertile by releasing minerals into it, but also clean up the environment. Hence, are called nature's scavengers. Children, just have a look how microorganisms appear when observed under microscope because we cannot see with our naked eyes. Moving ahead, that how energy flows in ecosystem. Biotech components are linked to each other primarily by food chain and form food chain and food webs in which decrease of energy is observed. One day, my student asked me, how does energy flow in an ecosystem? What is an energy pyramid? What is trophic level? How will I answer so many questions, ma? I said, child, don't worry. I will explain you one by one. The flow of energy from producers to consumers is always in one direction. That is unidirectional flow of energy. Clear? We all know that sun is the ultimate source of heat and light energy. And the series of organisms are interlinked to each other primarily by food and to start a food chain, producers, that is green plants, plays very important role. Hence, constitute the first trophic level. Next is primary consumers or herbivores, which constitutes second trophic level. After this, secondary consumers or carnivores that feed on herbivore which constitute third trophic level and the last level is of tertiary consumer or top carnivores that feed small carnivores and takes place fourth trophic level. So the various steps representing organism in a food chain at which transfer of food and energy takes place are called trophic level. And children, this concept of energy pyramid was developed by Charles Sutherland Elton. So these pyramids are also known as Eltonian pyramid. Now we have three different sample of food chain depicting various trophic levels. 
you can see a five step food chain in grassland ecosystem then other two are showing aquatic ecosystem in which one shows pond and another is of ocean i am explaining one of them grass is eaten up by a grasshopper then grasshopper is eaten up by rat and rat is eaten up by snake and finally snake is in turn eaten up by hawk so the series of organisms that are linked to each other through a process of eating and being eaten forms a food chain each step of food chain is called trophic level and when several food chains are interconnected or interlinked forming a network just like a web it forms a food web children please see and try to make out the difference between food chain and food web yes so what you can see that food chain only follows just one path as animals find food while food web many different paths in which plants and animals are connected right now children next component of an ecosystem is a biotic component which includes air water soil sunlight temperature humidity and wind air acts as a basic abiotic component which is essential for living beings water is another important abiotic component which helps to carry out basic life processes and since 75% of earth is covered by water maximum living organisms live in aquatic habitat whether they are aquatic animals or aquatic plants as shown in the picture soil is also important a biotic component as it provides medium for the growth of plants it is home to a variety of living organisms such as bacteria insects fungi and earthworms earthworms as we all know is farmer's best friend as they are capable of moving 6 tons of soil my god up and down in a year thereby adding minerals and nutrients to the soil climatic factors like wind humidity temperature and sunlight also affect the ecosystem to a great extent sunlight affect plant and animal activities in a number of ways for example photosynthesis transpiration germination of seeds and so on the intensity of light also influences behavior of animals some of them you cannot see around as they are active at night like termites earthworms birds owl and cockroaches such animals are called as nocturnal animals most of the animals that you see around are active during the day as they can tolerate bright light like birds dog horse sheep etc and are called diurnal animals i hope difference between the two is clear next is interdependence among living organism let me explain you the meaning of term interdependence that is condition of a group of people or things that all depend on each other for example human beings depend on plants 
for food, oxygen, antibiotics, wood, paper and so on. Same way in nature, plants and animals depend on each other to fulfill their needs. This creates balance in nature. However, human intervention or natural disaster have disturbed this balance. What is symbiosis? What are different kinds of symbiosis? And what are the examples? Children, the effects that the organism in a community have on one another are called biological interactions. This can involve individuals of same or of different species. Sometimes interactions are direct and at times indirect through shared resources or common enemies. So let's study about some biological interactions and these are of four types. Mutualism, parasitism and predation which you will study in detail and about commensalism you will study in higher classes. The interaction in which both organisms are benefited is called mutualism. The most common example is lichen where an alga and a fungus live together. Commensalism is when one benefits and other is unaffected. Example, epiphytes. Predation is an interaction in which one organism captures and eats other organism. Parasitism is the type of interaction in which parasite is always benefited while the host is harmed. The most common example is you all, all know very well and that is mosquitoes. Children, this slide shows the mutualism that is symbiotic relationship in which atmospheric nitrogen is converted into nitrates with the help of nitrogen fixing bacteria called rhizobium. Since this bacteria cannot make their own food, therefore lives in the root nodules of leguminous plants like peas and gram and in turn provide plants with molecular nitrogen which is around 25 to 60 kg in a year. Clear children? Now parasitism is a uh, little bit confusing. Why? Because it is uh, seen in animals and plants as well. Right? Now here parasitism, uh, the organism that benefits is called parasite. Okay? And the organism that parasite lives on is known as host. I am giving you a small example children. Leech sucking the blood from cow's body. Here leech is parasite and cow is host. There are two different types of parasites. External parasites which live outside the host body and are called as ectoparasites. Example ticks, head louse, fleas, etc. Next is internal parasites which live inside the host body and are called endoparasites. Example, hookworm, tapeworms, etc. Parasitism, as I told you, is seen in animals and plants. It's really amazing children. Just see how fungus are growing on a tree trunk. 
deriving food and shelter from the tree. And gradually what happens? The tree weakens and loses its strength. Now we have another example, cascata or dodder plant, commonly called amarbale. It has a short root and long thread-like stem, which twines around the host stem and appears like maggi noodles. This plant draws nutrition from the host's body as it does not contain chlorophyll. So now it is clear that since fungus and cascata do not contain chlorophyll, hence they are parasitic plant. This plant is quite useful in treating patients having various problems like constipation and diarrhea and all. Now this beautiful orchids grow as a parasitic plant on trees. Now we will discuss the last biological interaction and that is predation in which one organism kills another for food. The animal who is killing is the predator and the one who is killed or fed by predators are called prey. So I hope you will not get confused. Now, after completing the explanation of symbiosis, moving to different types of ecosystem. First is natural ecosystem, which are the gifts of nature, like deserts, grasslands, oceans, forests, while artificial or man-made ecosystem are engineered by man. Example, garden, park, crop fields, aquariums. In this slide, natural ecosystem is bifurcated into terrestrial, that is land-based, and aquatic, that is water-based ecosystem. Aquatic system can be of fresh water and it can be of marine water ecosystem. But the marine ecosystem is really beautiful from inside as you can see in the slide. You need to know other examples of man-made ecosystems like zoo, dam, fish farm, greenhouse, terrarium, etc. Approximately one-third of the Earth's total land area is covered by forests. My God! That is why forests are one of the largest and the most complex ecosystem which inhabits variety of organisms, hence a rich source of biodiversity. Forest can be of several types like tropical forest, wet or dry forest and evergreen or deciduous forest. Let's go through the characteristics of forest ecosystem as they are the main source of livelihood. They regulate the temperature, controls the climate by bringing down the temperature and increasing the rainfall, checking out soil erosion, controlling floods. So overall the productivity of forest ecosystem is judged by the richness in the diversity of its flora, that is plants, and fauna, that is animals. This is why forests are storehouse of biodiversity and biological resources. They help in reducing global warming and maintaining ecological balance. Since the oxygen level is maintained in the atmosphere, therefore forests are also called the lungs of the earth. In India, there is great diversity in forests ranging from Kerala in the south to Ladakh in the north. From the environmental point of view, 
each species plays its own role in an ecosystem. It is interlinked to several others through food chain and other relations. Destroying or depleting the population of one species can have an impact on several others. So, to have a control on cutting down of trees which improves the earth's environment, thereby conserving forests, we all have started uh, this World Environment Day. And people all over the world, they are celebrating World Environment Day on 5th June every year. After know knowing so much about ecosystem, why should I skip this information about this great ecologist, Eugene P. Odom, who is called the father of modern ecology? At last, a small message for my dear children. Reduce pollution because Mother Earth is not yours nor mine. It's ours. So, protect your mother who nourish you. Thank you children for your support and cooperation and a heartfelt gratitude to those who all have subscribed my channel and giving their suggestions, likes in the comment section. Have a nice day. Take care. Stay blessed.